Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at ways we can add some directional movement by creating gradients and some lines. So let's go ahead and take a look at some things here. I'm going to go up to the very top layer and I'm going to create a new layer. All right, above this, I'm going to create a new layer. This layer here, I'm going to call it lines. All right, now there's a whole lot of different ways you could create a line in this uh, program. One of the ways is to use the tool down here on the left, okay? And basically, it sometimes looks like a rectangle, but it can also look like any of these, okay? I'm going to make it go to the line tool. Now, notice that it defaulted to the color that was my foreground color, this um, kind of purple color. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to make it white. Now, this tool has uh, some settings you need to take a look at. One of the things is the weight. Uh, I'm going to make it, let's see what 20 looks like, 20 pixels. And I'm going to see, that's that's a pretty skinny line. I'm going to undo that, Control-Alt-Z. All right, and maybe I'll go a little thicker than that. Let's go to 40. And now, this tool has three different modes. All right. I created a line for this because right now we are working with raster graphics. Now this is a vector tool. These are all vector tools and you're going to be learning about those later. But right now I want to move this into pixels mode, which is the third option. It's called fill pixels. And what it means is when you're drawing, it's just going to draw all on the same layer. So what I want to do is just take a couple lines here. Let's see. And I'm going to draw that out like so maybe on here like that and then what I want to do is do some transformation on it so I'm going to do edit transform and warp and what you can do is start pulling this stuff out so you see how this works you can make the lines move how you want maybe maybe even cross some you see how that goes kind of like kind of like a coca-cola symbol or something anyway like so and click enter so you see how that creates some lines. Now I could rotate that. I'm going to do a control T for transform. And I'm going to rotate this around. And let's see, maybe something like, like that. All right. Enter. Now, now that I have it coming through here, uh, I like the way that looks. I'm going to add to this by creating some semi-transparent lines, some lines that just affect the area. And the way I'm going to do that is very similar. I'm going to create a new layer and with this one here I'm going to call gradient alright now the gradient is going to work a little differently I'm going to create a selection and I'm going to use the rectangular selection tool to just select a region like so now I'm going to make a custom gradient to make this work so I'm going to click on my gradient tool and it defaults the colors I have here and I'm going to choose one of these that are set up now, once I do that, I'm going to double click this main gradient and I'll be presented with the gradient editor. Now, in the gradient editor, I'm going to show you how this works. It's pretty cool. Basically, this has two different colors I'm using right now. Well, I'm going to make it use um, a different set of colors, more than two. So, right now, it's using purple and orange. And what I want to do is make this one here orange as well, same orange. So, let's see, something like. So, all right, so that's pretty similar orange. And I want to also add a color. So I'm going to add a color out here. And this one here is going to be a white. So now I have orange, orange, white. Now, this is very boring gradient right now. It's just orange fading to white. But I also have the ability to control its transparency or opacity. So this color here has this opacity. If I click on this guy, see it's 100, all right? This one over here is black, so it's 100 opacity, completely solid orange. If I click on it, I can change that to zero. And notice how this fades away, goes from white to orange to orange transparent. You see there's a difference, okay? All right, so I'm going to do that. And what I want to do is basically give this just a little bit of a, a haze of white at the end there and click OK. Now I'm going to draw my gradient within this shape, holding down Shift and dragging up. And you see I got this little line. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. So I have two gradients. All right. And I'm going to start with the bottom one. And what I want to do with this layer is I'm going to 
once again warp it all right so I'm gonna do edit transform and warp and you see how I have the ability to do the same type of stretching I did before right so I can stretch it and I can move it all right I think I like that right there and I'm gonna deselect I don't have to keep the selection all right and you can see how that's how that's definitely working this area I think I'm gonna flip it around the other way yeah let's flip it edit transform and flip horizontal all right and right now this is a hundred percent solid normal layer well let's change that to something different like overlay and see how that works so you can see how that's changing the way this looks already now I'm gonna do the same thing again this time with the gradient copy so I'm gonna take the gradient copy and I think mm, let's see I think maybe I want to flip this before I do it so I'm gonna do a flip vertical oops I was on the wrong layer control Z switch back to the gradient copy and transform and flip vertical all right so you can see how that one goes and I could put it down here let's see yeah maybe put it there and then I'm gonna drag it I'm gonna drag it down underneath so let's drag it underneath these so it's down below let's make it here all right so it kind of sits behind so I've kind of framed out this region I can also change it from normal to overlay and you kind of see how that has altered the way this particular section looks alright let's take a look at how this is looking close up pretty neat pretty neat uh, let's see I would want probably want the line here to look like it's going through the flower right so to do that I'd have to make this part of the line disappear not a problem I'll move up to my lines layer I'll give it a mask and in that area where the flower is I need to definitely make my brush normal again let's make it much normal all right I would just want to paint black and make it look like it's coming right through so you can see how that's coming right through another thing I could do on the on the layer with the lines is I could change the um, I could change the opacity to see how that does right I could uh, change it to another mode like overlay as well you can see how what that does and the way it affects it I don't know if overlay is what I want maybe maybe leave it in normal and just add some to the mask let's just make the mask a little more interesting I think I'm gonna switch back to a once again a large brush that is uh, really low opacity and just see if I can maybe mask some of this away so I'm on the mask make sure you're working on the mask and I'm just gonna mask some of this away to where the lines don't look so bright necessarily something like that yeah and you can even add some effects to this so for example down here in the effects menu I could maybe do a let's see what an outer glow does take a look at that all right, so outer glow. If I turn off preview, you can kind of see how it looks. Then you turn preview on, you see how it comes out. What I'm going to do is put it in. Um, let's put it in normal mode, and let's see if we make the size bigger, so you can kind of see how that's glowing through. All right, just flying through. All right, so I got pretty lucky with the way that glow went. Uh, you might not have the exact thing, and honestly, too much glow can look really weird. So be careful with how you use it. I'm going to zoom out on that and take a look I think it's missing one thing I think we're gonna to have to put in some words and we'll do that in the next video